Hi everyone, here's the book chemist once again. Today I'm recommending The 20 Days of Turin, Le 20 Giornate di Torino by Giorgio De Maria. Uh, an excellent novel for anybody who is a fan of dark and sinister novels, of surreal postmodernism, and especially of cosmic horror, uh, especially in the vein of H.P. Lovecraft. Um, the 20 Days of Turin is a very peculiar literary gem from the 1970s that was all but forgotten in Italy, the, Mori the, the Maria's native country, until the English translation came out a few years ago uh, and suddenly the novel acquired almost cult status which prompted a new edition of the Italian original too. The 20 Days of Turin resonated immensely with me. It speaks to something that I am very fascinated about myself something I've been pondering all my life, and it addresses this strangeness, this mystery, uh, in a way that only the lens of supernatural, or at least paradoxical fiction, affords us. The Twenty Days of Turin is, as the title says, very much a novel about Turin, and especially about Turin's historic city centre. But I would personally argue that the reflections that the Maria's narrator uh, indulges in and, and explores throughout the novel could very well apply to many other Italian cities. They could possibly apply to my native city of Monza and they could definitely apply to nearby Milan. All of these are places that present a facade of luxury, wealth and refinement. Uh, places that are covered by a veneer of sleepiness that feels halfway between apathy and self-satisfaction. But at the same time, wandering these places, living in these cities, you cannot help but perceive through countless signifiers and even through a certain vibe, a certain atmosphere, you cannot help but perceive the forces of violence, intrigue and oppression that not only contributed to create this wealth, but are still very much present underneath the facade of these places. These forces, these dynamics and these contradictions are very hard to grasp and the metaphors of cosmic horror uh, that De Maria uses in the 20 days of Turin don't quite explain the nature of these mysteries, but manage to convey how it feels to be confronted with them. Them, to be confronted with this, this maddening unknown. Beyond its smoky atmosphere, the main plot in the 20 days of Turin is actually a fairly straightforward horror plot. It deals with strange giant creatures wandering the streets of Turin and occasionally using people literally as weapons, bashing people against each other and leaving behind dead shells. But this central plot is only one of the mysteries that are mentioned in the novel as the narrator who is investigating this strange phenomenon soon finds out, especially as he is confronted with other investigators of this phenomenon. And this web of mysteries, this web of almost conspiracies, is very central to cosmic horror. Um, it's something you find a lot in H.P. Lovecraft. In all of Lovecraft's stories, his characters are always discovering alien conspiracies, but even more than that, they are getting a glimpse of countless other conspiracies that are hidden just beyond their sight. And it's a central tenet in this genre because it speaks to what I was mentioning before, this idea that cosmic horror is not so much about some kind of conspiracy theory, it's not so much about giving us a metaphor for the world's injustice, it's about being confront confronted uh, with the true mechanisms of existence, the, the hideous uh, nature of life, of the, the hidden life that is hidden behind the veneer of our positivistic view on a just uh, and, and uh, fair world behind our optimistic views about society as rewarding, uh, upstanding citizens, beyond all of our illusions, if you will. What is really brilliant for me in the 20 days of Turin is that these tenets, these uh, tropes of cosmic horror are very much focalized through, th through the specific situation of the book's writing, through the Italian situation of the 1970s. Uh, one of the central elements of the plot, and I'm sure one of the things that contributed to making the book really popular in the English-speaking world, is la biblioteca, the library. Uh, this um, 
impromptu strange library in Turin in the book uh, where citizens could leave their manuscripts, other citizens could wander in and pick them up, um, people could leave say their diaries or their memories, sorry their, their memoirs and in this way uh, search for some kind of ephemeral connection uh, with each other. They could in this way confess their, their darkest thoughts and their their darkest impulses and, and share them with other people who share their same pensions. This was seen as a dark prophecy about the rise of social media, especially considering social media's uh, power as a catalyst for collective feelings of hate, prejudice, fear, uh, rage and beyond. And that's that's very true, I think. That's, I think that's a brilliant way to read the novel. But I think what's very important is that the novel goes one step beyond and points the finger at the people who are establishing this library, who have an interest in creating this illusion of connection in people, in letting people uh, wallow in their darkest impulses. And these are described in the novel as uh, young people, uh, well-dressed young people, who were trying to avenge some recent historic defeats and who have an interest in providing people with these illusions, in keeping them isolated through these, um, these effigies of connection. It's very hard not to think of the far-right and neo-fascist organizations that were thriving at the time, that were thriving in the, the 1970s, under, very often under the eye of the state, often with financing from foreign secret services and who were already uh, trying to legitimize their existence through a process that only continued through the decades up to the point where many of these people are now in prominent positions in government. As the mystery unfurls, even more parallels emerge between the plot of the 20 Days of Turin and the occult, sinister atmosphere of the Anni di Piombo, the years of lead, this period of political violence in 1970s Italy and, and beyond. Uh, the mayor of Turin, for instance, is seen as a honest, exhausted, hard-working man who, while supposedly in a position of power, actually has very little capacity for, for real change in the city, where a re the real power is actually wielded by different and much darker forces. The murderers in the 20 Days of Turin are described as beyond suspicion and unassailable, even while their hands are covered in blood. And these monsters on the loose, then it's very fitting, it's a very powerful metaphor that they turn out to be statues, especially the statues of great literary, great uh, uh, literary men, historical figures, of these figures that very much constitute the Italian cultural canon. They're very much part of the established uh, cultural institutions in the country. The church's role in these dark mysteries is also very obvious. Uh, uh, take, for instance, the nun, who at one point tries to dissuade the narrator from continuing with his quest, or the nightmarish vision toward the end of the novel of a church cleaving through a neighborhood like a monster. And finally, in perfect Anni di Piombo style, the man who is arrested for the, uh, the murders of the, the 20 days is clearly innocent, and is clearly just a scapegoat who was framed in a very obvious manner. The entire horror then takes on a shape that is all the more hideous because it feels really familiar to anybody who has even a passing familiarity with the, the Anni di Piombo, with the years of lead. We have a disenfranchised, stunned people moving around the city in a state of near insomnia, being used as the platings, as the weapons of dark forces that are very much identifiable with the Italian state, uh, with the establishment, and who exploit uh, fringe organizations who get support from the church and only regard the common people already regard the country as their battlefield. I'm afraid, however, that trying to explain away all of these parallels doesn't really shine a light on the novel as much as it diminishes its beautiful dark light. As I said before, the, the message of cosmic horror is not so much to try and puzzle out 
uh, any given mystery, but it's to try and convey how it feels to be confronted with these mysteries that are beyond our comprehension and drive us mad if we, if we contemplate them for too long. These great mysteries of the, the most hidden and the most dark mechanisms of existence. Uh, I think The Twenty Days of Turin is a, is a fantastic novel. It's, uh, it makes this historical and uh, mysterious, tangible and intangible in a magical blend. If you're interested in this type of narrative, uh, I think you will adore the novel. I definitely did and I, uh, it, it's been one of the most impactful reads I've had in a, in a very long time. As I said, I know that the novel has acquired a bit of a cult status in recent years, so um, I wonder whether it's um, whether you knew about it, whether you've read it, uh, if you've heard it discussed a lot, uh, and I look forward to discussing it in the comment section, as always. Thank you so much for um, watching the review, that's always fantastic. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting the YouTube, the YouTube channel, and bye everybody.